Hey, what's going on there guys? You've officially arrived at the 420 scene and today we're gonna to be talking about the top seven ways to speed up your harvest time. But first, show us some love and support by watching the entire video, dropping a like, subscribing, and tapping the post notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Also, be sure to join our VIP Patreon program for tips, monthly giveaways, live streams, all that good stuff. Link will be in the description below. And also, don't forget, if you wanna come and test with us, check out our grows, all that stuff, and just chill with us. Follow us on Instagram. Link to that will also be in the description below. So before we dive into today's video, I think it's appropriate for us to just take a moment and take a step back. It's been 20 years since the 9-11 attacks and so many people lost their lives. And you know, there were so many families that never got to see their kids grow up. Kids that grew up without their parents that they needed to help them grow up. And you know, 20 years ago on September 11th, I don't know some of you guys are like young, maybe some of you guys are too young for, you know, you don't know what happened on September 11th, but it was so horrific that we all knew exactly what we were doing. I know I knew where I was doing. I know it was freshman year, I had shop class. Like I literally remember even, even exactly the seat that I was sitting in. I know we always joke around that we don't remember what happened yesterday or you know, last week, two weeks ago, but we all know what we were doing 20 years ago on 9-11, so I just wanna give a moment of silence to those that lost their lives and those families that lost somebody. Today we're gonna to talk about the different ways you could speed up your harvest time, and there are different ways that you can speed it up because everybody wants to finish a lot faster. I mean, it makes sense. And then I'm gonna tell you if these ways actually let you finish a lot faster, or if it's just stuff that everybody says. So there are a lot of reasons why you might wanna harvest early. You know, maybe you're moving to a new house like we're gonna be doing, and you have to pack up your stuff, or maybe you're growing in the Northeast where it gets super cold, so you just wanna get it done early. There's a lot of reasons. Now, the the things that you have to remember is that there are always going to be trade-offs here. Everything in life has trade-offs and you might be compromising your yield in potency in exchange for getting it done faster. So that's something I need everybody here to know going into it. You can't always have the best of both worlds. It just does not work that way. So number one, growing autoflowers. This is probably the easiest one. So I figured, you know what? I would get this one out of the way and a lot of people say that they're gonna get done a lot faster and they're gonna mature at a faster rate than photo strains. And the thing about autoflowering strains is that, you know, they could start two weeks after germination, but they can also end up being in veg for maybe like five or even six weeks. It's happened, you, you remember the Skittles series, right? Now it's time to shoot everybody down from the sky. Even though autoflower strains are said to be a lot faster, they end up not really being that much faster. Not as fast as a lot of people think. Maybe a week faster, maybe two. It, it's all going to lie on how fast they're going to get into flower. So if you're growing strains that the veg time is only two weeks, then obviously it's gonna be faster than photos that take about you know six to eight weeks until you can start getting them into flower. So just know that auto flowers are not as quick as people think, but it still might shave off a week or two. You know, obviously, like I said, depending on how long you veg for. Now that's the biggest thing. If you're vegging for five weeks, you're not gonna save that much time. But if you're in veg for only two weeks, like I said, then yeah, absolutely. Number two, taking your photos straight into flowering. Bam, I'm gonna hit them with 12-12. You can absolutely force your photos to start flowering by putting them in a 12-12 cycle. I mean, right off the bat. This is gonna be another case of sacrificing your yield, but you can absolutely switch your light cycle to 12 on and 12 off. Number three, grow straight from clones. This one is pretty interesting because a lot of you already know my views on cloning, but a lot of people say that it speeds up the growing process. You're cutting out the seedling stage and getting right into the veg stage. And it's cheaper than buying seeds because you can just take it from the mother plant. And the idea of this method is supposed to be fast and consistently give you plants to work with. Now this only works for photos. Do not start taking cuttings from auto flowering strains. It's just a bad idea. Now is cloning something that I would personally recommend? Like is that something I would actually get in and just do? Absolutely not. You know, it takes a while for them to start to recover and you gotta really baby the heck out of them and, and with the amount of time you're gonna be waiting for them to recover and look the way that they're supposed to look, you might as well just start from seed, but it is one way to eliminate the seedling stage. So, you know, some people love cloning and some people just think that it's just too much of a hassle to deal with. 
I will join the ladder on this one. So I'm just throwing in my two cents here. So if you want to clone, just remember, it's not gonna cut as much time as you can. Theoretically, it does make sense to just start them off with clones. You don't have to worry about the seedling stage. So if you have issues with the seedling stage, then go ahead, start cloning. Number four, vegging with lights on 24 hours a day. Now, everybody that's been watching this channel for a while knows how dead against I am with vegging for 24 hours a day, only because I feel like every living thing naturally needs a resting period. Some people are gonna disagree, some people are gonna agree. It is what it is. I'm not here to agree with anybody, just here to throw in my two cents. I mean, we all need a resting period, right? I mean, we do, animals do, plants do, it's just the way it goes. Then again, if you wanna go against nature, you know, you can leave them on 24 seven. I mean, eating Tide Pods and licking toilet seats and calling it a challenge is against nature, so at this point, why not just leave them on for 24 seven? Now, by keeping the light on all the time you're gonna be cutting your veg time by I think like a third and still have a pretty good sized plant by the time that you do start flowering now if this is the route you want to take just keep a close eye on deficiencies if your plants are not liking the 24 7 either lower the wattage or give them a resting period so if the 24 hours you see some issues cut it right there all right number five and this next one I've recently heard a lot of people doing and I had to do some research myself but give your plants less than 12 hours of light per day during the flowering stage. Now, now hear me out, all right? I know some people have been giving their plants 11 on and 13 off. I actually saw some people in the comment section kind of ask me about that. And um, you know, when I first started, you know, even when I was training myself all the years of growing, nobody ever mentioned, you know, 11 on, 13 off. It was just like 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12 flowering, that's it. So I personally never tried it. It's something I do want to eventually try out just kind of like as an experiment. And let me know in the comment section if you tried this technique and if it's just worked out for you. Now what's the supposed to happen is that by reducing your light even more than 12 hours, it's gonna trick your plants into thinking that winter is coming a lot faster, or, you know, at least that's supposed to be the idea. I also forgot to mention that when you switch your plants to the flowering stage, give them 48 hours of darkness before you start the new light cycle. If this is the way you wanna go, choose a strain that naturally finishes quicker. Number six, perpetual harvest. I love this one, absolutely love this one. Now this requires to have a decent amount of space to work with, obviously, because you need more than one tent, you need more, more than one setup going on, but if you have a perpetual grow going on, you're always gonna have a steady supply of flowers. It just is what it is. This isn't gonna make it a lot faster. I know that's what this video is about, but it's going to speed up your productivity, which is why I felt like I should at least mention it in this video. So pretty much you're gonna have two rooms or two tents, and while one is gonna be in flower, you're gonna have one tent for veg. So by the time that your flowering plants are done, you can just move the veg plants into flower, and then you would get the new plants going in the veg tent, got it? I've always been a fan of having perpetual grows. I just have haven't been able to do it, you know, bathroom grow, it kind of just sucks, you know what I mean? I haven't done it in the apartment we're living in now because, you know, space has just always been an issue, but hopefully when we get a house or maybe even a bigger place, I do want to have a perpetual thing going on. I used to do it when I lived at my mom's house, you know, back like in maybe 2017, 2016, 2017, we had like a perpetual thing going on and it was it, it was really good. It definitely, definitely kept us hopping, you know? We, we definitely had a steady amount of flowers going, like all the time. And if you have a crazy amount of, this is insane, you can actually have, have it by the month. So if you have photos, you can have it so, you know, the first month, and then second month, you know, the first month of veg, second month of veg, and then, and, you know, those are gonna be two separate setups. And then you could have month three and month four. On average, you're about, gonna be, you're gonna be flowering for about two months anyway. So that, I mean, that's crazy to have that, you know, running four setups, but that is something that you can do. It's gonna speed up your productivity. And by the way, cause I know a lot of people have been asking me, you know, why I'm not showing my grows. Maybe some people are new on here. Maybe some people just don't get it, but YouTube does not like grow videos, okay? They do not like it. You guys probably won't be able to see it anyway. So when I come out with a video, you're just not gonna see it because YouTube's like, nope, I'm not gonna show your fans this. So if you do wanna catch all my grows and that stuff, that's why I say in the beginning of every video, go on Instagram. So the next series we're gonna be starting maybe around the second or third week of October. We might be moving around that time, so it might be a little bit later. I'm not really sure, but we're, sh we're trying to shoot for middle of October. We're gonna be filming on the second week, so you guys will be able to watch it like in the third week of October. We're gonna be doing a 
a super soil series in a four by four foot ten just so everybody kind of knows ahead of time I know some people were asking about the hydro stuff I think we might I, I don't want this to get too overwhelming for me so I'm going to have the super soil series first and then we're going to be doing the hydro series after so that way it's not too crazy for me because I have never done hydro before and I, I'm really interested and I really want to try it out with you guys. So moving on, number seven, and this next one is probably going to be a no-brainer, but I'm still going to mention it for the sake of the video, and that is to pick strings that will be flowering quicker. And I'm not talking about photos versus auto flowers. I mean, even indicas. There are certain indicas that will flower like seven weeks. You know, you don't have to wait eight, nine weeks. I mean, it's still a week or two less, but you know, we're still trying to save some time. That's still a week or two, you know what I mean? Now I'm talking about actual strains that don't need that much attention and you can get them done a lot quicker. You guys remember the Blue Cheese series. If you haven't, check it out on Instagram. I mean, absolutely phenomenal flowers, I'll tell you that right now. I got them done, I think like in seven weeks or so. I, I believe it was about seven weeks and I mean, it just, it just grew really quickly and it was just, it was a really good series. So bottom line, like I said, just pick strains that are gonna flower faster. So those are my seven ways. Guys, if you see me like sweating here, it's like super hot. It's, it's like 88 degrees today. Anyway, so those are my seven ways of growing and finishing as fast as possible. I mean, it's gonna cut off like a week or two. I hope you guys weren't expecting it was gonna cut off like a month or something like that. But if you guys have any ways to speed up your harvest, you know, something that maybe I didn't mention, definitely drop it in the comment section below. And the next thing I want to talk about is the new series. I kind of brushed on it a little bit. We're going to be in a four by four foot tent. We're going to be growing some purple frost giant. I want to try to get some slurricane by in-house genetics. We're going to be running in a 10 gallon pots. And as for the lights, next time YouTube pays me, I'm going to actually buy two electric sky ES 300s. I've wanted those lights for like the last two years. I just never, you know, pulled the trigger on them. So I think the next series is gonna be awesome. I tried out the Bloom Plus lights and the harvest was great. So that's that's what put the bug in my ear. I'm like, you know what? Let me try the electric skylights because everybody's raving about them. So I just wanna see if I'm gonna get a lot better results with the ES300s as opposed to the Mars Hydro stuff that we've been using for the last two years or even the Bloom Plus lights that we've been using. I mean, I heard absolutely nothing but the best from the Green Sunshine Company. I mean, they're everywhere. A lot of the top growers have them so I really want to try those electric sky LEDs like high key you know they're supposed to be like the Bentley of light so I think it's gonna be great and I know that they lowered the price to $625 for the ES 300 I'm not sure if you guys checked out their website but they did lower it from I think it was like $725 so when I saw the $625 price tag I was like I gotta get these now you know what I'm saying so like I said next series we're gonna start second or third week of October that's at least what I'm shooting for so I feel like we come covered a ton of stuff today, but before we close off today's video, I want to thank everyone on screen for supporting us on Patreon since February. I totally, absolutely appreciate it, like high key. So I'm going to close off today's video. Be sure to drop a fat thumbs up, drop that fat like, and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And I'll catch you guys later, and as always, stay safe. Peace.